Mark Henry back on the On Your Mark Show on 105.4 RPW, PeterPostRadio.com. Powered and sponsored by Epic Sports Apparel. Also on the On Your Mark YouTube channel. Click, like, and subscribe. Got a special guest tonight from the Houston area, man. Coach Michael Stevens. Your moment is now training. I think that's, man, that hits it on the head. Your moment is now. Take advantage of what you're trying to do right now. If you can't do it now, you can't wait for later. Right, Coach? Oh, yeah. Um, all my new clients, I always ask them, I say, one day or day one, you decide. So if you sit around saying, I'll do this one day, you know, it'll never come around. But if you decide to make today day one, you know, you just stack days on days on days. And, you know, before you know it, you're way ahead of the curve and you're way ahead of where you would have been had you not started. Most definitely, and that's that's a message that you want to send the kids, and you are doing that, man. So let's talk a bit about you before we get into where you're at uh, now. Uh, where'd you play ball at? Kind of what you did to get to this point. Uh, the biggest thing I played ball at East Texas Baptist, so I, you know, I didn't play at the D1 level or anything like that. Those who can't coach, so that's what I'm doing. That's what that's what I played uh, until 2005. Um, I actually held the interception record at East Texas Baptist for a little bit there. Uh, but from there, you know, just moved back home to the Dallas area uh, and got into coaching. I uh, started off at Royce City uh, Middle School, actually, you know, kind of cutting my teeth. And before I even say anything about myself, uh, I got a shout out to all the coaches that I started with early, like Mickey Moss, Chris Mosley, Melvin Robinson, Roman Alexander. Uh, um, all those guys, man, when I was a young guy, they held me accountable. You know, I, I had to step up and I had to do my part from a young age, you know, and without those guys at, uh, at places like Rockwall Heath, uh, places like um, Princeton with Lee Wilkins, uh, places like South Garland, you know, Saxony High School with Red Barons. Um, I wouldn't be where I am today. So those guys, you know, they held me accountable. I had to learn and I had to hold my ground. <laughs> if I didn't hold my ground, you know, hey, I get passed up. So shout out to those guys. So uh, from there, you know, I decided to come on down to the Houston area and that's where I got the Your Moment Is Now brand started. Talk about that a little bit. I think that's a unique name. Uh, where was the concept behind that? Uh, you talked about it a little bit before. How do you come up with something like that? Um, a lot of people get on me because it's kind of long, you know, so people look at it and like, oh, man, you might, you might want to shorten that down. But uh, the reason why, you know, I took your moment is now uh, always on my post is like hashtag take it. Uh, it's just no no room to wait. You know, I mean, you can just sit around waiting all day and uh, no results will come from that. You know, you got to do it while the opportunity is there, because if you don't do it when the opportunity is there, it may not come. Most definitely. And taking advantage of your opportunities now is what you're doing. Uh, big following on Instagram is how I came in contact with you. Uh, lots of stuff that you're posting on these kids. Now let's talk about uh, the things that you do with specific training. Uh, you, you train any position. So let's start except, with the big kicker and punter. Except kicker except and punter. Punter. I, I can't do that. <laughs> uh, those are the money making ones these days on a professional level. You got to have steel nerves to do that. But let's start with the big, the big one, the quarterback position. Uh, so, what are some of the things that you work on with your with your quarterbacks? Uh, just you know, in terms of on the field, you know, uh, just being a general, you know, taking charge. You know, uh, I always tell the quarterbacks that. These guys can't do the other job. The other guys can't do their job unless you do yours, you know, so they can't throw the ball to themselves. You know, they can't make the reads. You have to know your offense and all that. And, you know, just in terms of physicality, you know, just make sure, you know, footwork is correct, making sure that you can, you know, look down the field and kind of go through your progressions, know what you're doing, be in control of what you're doing, you know, and just being a leader. That's what a quarterback does, you know, um, can't score without the quarterback. We can't we can't get set without the quarterback. You know, uh, staying composed um, in uh, different situations. You know, because if we lose you, we lose it all. You know, so we got to have you. You know, there the whole time. So, patience, composure, leadership, things like that. Now the big fellas up front, O line. Uh, you know, they they can't start without the center snapping to them. If they don't get the snap off, it doesn't work. Uh, so what are some of the uh, things that you're working with? Uh, you're working with a kid from 
Uh, I was watching some tape earlier on the kid from Summer Creek High School, 6'2", 260. I think he's a guard tackle. Uh, big kid. It looks like he's doing his thing. Yeah, uh, we actually have uh, one of our first uh, graduates of the program, uh, Isaiah Hookfin. He plays offensive line at the University of Texas. Um, and, you know, the biggest thing is they got to unlock that, that anger, that, you know, that, that beast, you know. And, you know, understanding, the, you know, in the offensive line. I never played offensive line, so it was something I had to learn as I went along. But the one thing I did know is that when I, I got around that line when I was playing, uh, you had to kind of tiptoe through there. Because you know? <laughs> if you got around the right guys, you know, they, they all handle the DBs back there. So right, you know, just that, that grit and that, you know, knowing how you fit the piece of your, how your piece of the puzzle fits, you know, with the scheme of everything, because yeah, without the O-line, there is nothing, you know? So I say without quarterback, there's nothing, but really without the O-line, you know, those guys don't really get, you know, the glory and the, and the, you know, the fame, but they are integral pieces. So just being mean, nasty, knowing your assignment and driving through your man. Now let's go to the skill position, start at the running back position. Uh, you know, you, you got to get that handoff. But I also, uh, you know, there's some reads back there. You have to be, uh, you know, really good with your vision. Uh, there's some footwork involved. But also, you know, once it gets into, uh, you know, 11-man football or, or, you know, a team football outside of 707, you know, that's, that's ball security. Uh, you know, it's all kind of things. And some of the things that I've seen you work on, I, you had a kid on the track doing some different things, you know, some plyometric things, some footwork things, kind of loosen the hips up. How important is that as a running back? Oh, man, uh, your footwork is almost everything, you know, and it's not just, you know, planting and cutting and making different moves. It's, you know, knowing how to put a, a lot of kids, you know, these days, you know, I am not say these days, but, you know, on the high school level, they got to learn, you know, footwork in terms of blocking, you know. Right, right. You know, I always tell receivers, and I learned this from my old uh, coach, Melvin Robinson, it's just like, if you can't block, you can't play. You know, so, you know, you, you got to do it all, you know, so, and that's kind of what my service is. I kind of want the kids to, like, understand that it's not just about carrying the football. Okay, that's the glory that everybody sees, but, you know, they don't see the plyometric work you do. They don't see, you know, the explosion work you do. You don't, they don't see the track work you do. You know, there's a lot more that goes into making a complete player, and that's what my service really is, and that's what we kind of pride ourselves on, making a full player. Now, let's step out wide a little bit. Uh, you know, tight ends, receivers, you know, uh, you know, at the older they get, they get labeled as divas. But you have to work pretty hard uh, getting off the ball, uh, you know, setting them up, you know, or watch some of the tape of your teams warming up. You guys really preach route running, hands catching. I don't see a lot of your guys pulling it in. They really get their hands out to, to receive that ball in. Yeah, um, you know, that's the thing. It's just taking care of the little things, you know. If you can't get open, I can't throw you the ball. So – Part of it is, you know, releasing off the line of scrimmage, uh, setting up routes, um, knowing, you know, the opponent, you know, how does does this guy like to, you know, get in your face and jam? You know, does he jam step with one hand or does he get both hands up? And just knowing your opponent. So as you get older, you know, it's all about film study, you know, being a step ahead of the guy because you know what he's going to do before he does it. But as receivers, this is uh, the whole saying is, First of all, touch skin, bring it in. If you touch it, catch it. You know, there's no excuse. If it touches your skin, it's got to be a catch, you know. And then just, you know, being – now one of the things with my team that we had to work on, catching in traffic. You know, sometimes, you know, our kids, you know, with the moment is now 707, you know, they're seventh and eighth graders. So, they, you know, you don't get much throwing, you know, or accurate throwing in high school – I mean, in middle school, so – you know, just working on catching the ball in traffic, having nerves of steel. And uh, if you catch it, it's going to hurt anyway when they hit you. So you might as well put your name in the paper. Most definitely. And, you know, I've seen a lot of tape of you guys here uh, this past couple of weeks. And uh, back in the fall, you guys are doing it, man. And, again, this is Coach Michael Stevens from Your Moment is Now Training. And let's, let's go on the defensive side. Before we get to your special, let's get with the backers. Uh, what are some of the keys to reading uh, you know, a being in a linebacker, they have a lot of reads. You know, that you got the strong side linebacker, depending on what defense, 3-4 or 4-3. Uh, you know, you got the middle linebacker. He's really the captain. Uh, but there's some footwork that goes into that as well. And with 7-on-7, seven seven, it's all passing. So they get a lot of reps uh, defending the pass. 
Yeah, uh, one of the biggest things I like with my with linebackers is, you know, especially in 707, you know, at the seventh and eighth grade level that we're on, and even in the high school level, it's like talking to them as if they're football players, like knowing terminology, you know. So with 707, you have the, the ability to talk to them, talk with them, you know, and you don't just say, hey, go here. Make sure they know what the flat is. Make sure they know what the hook the curl is. Make sure they know what it means to wall a receiver. What does it mean to wall and sit? You know, uh, how to sit in a zone and you know know what's coming at you. So in seven on seven terms, that's huge. You know, I want my kids going up to the next level. And the coaches in high school when they're in ninth grade, tenth grade, and they're like, "Well, how does this ninth grader know that he has uh, the hook the curl zone and he can talk to me in that way?" I'm reading number two to number one for my drop. And I'm rallying up to the, um, to the to the to the to the flat, you know, just words like that. And I think linebackers, are the, you know, they set the front, you know, and um, if they know those terms and they're able to actually put those terms into practical practical use, then they're just step much further ahead of the game. And you know, real football is all about gap control. You know, if you can find your gap, I mean, you can. We call it follow the elephants to the circus. So right. the O-line tells you what to do. You know, you just read your key and get to your gap, play gap sound football, and we'll be good. Now let's let's finish up with the DBs. Uh, a lot of footwork goes into that. A lot of what you already said, verbiage, uh, you know, reading coverage, you know, passing a guy off. You know, is he, is he going in? He has to let that linebacker know what's going on. Safeties have to be able to cover a lot of ground. Uh, you know, you play defensive back at East Texas, uh, you know, East, East Texas Baptist, which is no slouch. That's one of the top uh, Division three conferences in the country, you know. So talk about that a little bit. Oh, man, DBs, that's that's what I love, you know. Uh, uh, um, shout out to Jared Maiden. You know, he plays it for the 49ers right now. You know, uh, I got to work with him for uh, his freshman through uh, so, uh, senior year, uh, junior year, sorry, before I moved on. Uh, Donovan DuVernay, uh, University of Texas alum, you know, a lot of guys, Cole Calkins, as a uh, McPherson. I, I, if I missed your name, sorry, you know. But uh, with DBs, man, I just feel like that's the ultimate position to play because if you mess up at linebacker, they don't know that you didn't cover, like you didn't find your zone. They don't know that you didn't hit your gap. But if you mess up in the safety, every even if it wasn't your fault, everybody thinks it's your fault. Or right. if you mess up a corner, oh, he was in man-to-man. No, he might not have been in man-to-man coverage. He might not have had somebody over the top to help him, you know, right. where he's supposed to be there. So just, you know, never – there's one coverage uh, I never want to play, and it's called – a coverage called I got him, you take him. So <laughs> what that means, you know, hey, right, that means that right. I got him, no, no, you take him. You know what you're doing, and you right. know, you know, your position and how to get it done, and – it's a technique tech. They know where they're going, that receiver, you don't know. So you got to really study film. You got to know tendencies. You got to know how like, field positioning, like why is this receiver lined up out wide? Well, maybe he's trying to come inside. Or why is this receiver lined up tight to the, to, the, to the hash? Oh, he might be trying to go outside. Just knowing stuff like that, you know, puts you in a better position. And, you know, I love that, that chess game, that battle, you know, and the swag of the DBs, you know, and, you know, just being out there and, you know, making play, there's nothing better than a pick or a pick six. You know, I love it. So, you know, that's that's just what I teach them. Just getting confidence, um, shaking off the last play because it just stays with you the whole time. So you got to be thick skinned and, you know, keep moving even when, you know, it's, uh, it's hard for you because you got to go to the next play. No doubt. You have to have a short term memory is what they call it. Uh, yeah. You know, I, in my opinion, I think it's probably – even more difficult than a quarterback, you know, right, right there at one and two uh, because of the mentality and the precision that you have to play with. It's the next play up. You can't wait to, you know, you make a, a touchdown. You got to come back, find out what you did wrong, correct it the next play. The next, yeah. the next play is your best play on any exactly. position, but especially at the defensive back position. But okay, oh, yeah. coach. Now, uh, I think it's interesting that you went to East Texas Baptist. Uh, you know, today, the kids are enamored with the Alabamas, the Division Ones, the TV, the big promotional uh, Division One college. Everybody is not going to be D1. Uh, you know, a message that I like to send is you go where you want it, 
you go where they have a plan for you. And then in Texas, come football is, is king. You know, it's it doesn't matter what level you play with. If you can play professional, uh football will be in your in your way or you know in your cards if you ball out. So uh talk about how you get that message across as well. Uh it's just so funny, man. Like I talk to a lot of parents. And these parents don't understand the power of social media, you know, and, and I, some of these kids, you know, they don't, I look at their social media and they have one post or zero posts, but they have like a thousand followers somehow. And I'm struggling to get my followers up. But right. That goes, that goes into the video part. Like if you go to my Instagram um, and you see, you know, I put those videos out for, you know, to, to build the brand up, but at the same time, you can be found. And to go back to your question, it's it's so much easier these days to find a kid. I like I talked about the, the kid I have from Texas. I did not know that that you know the recruiters knew that I trained him, but it's because they see it all, you know. Right. And social media is such a big tool that if you use it the correct way, you know, not everybody's gonna go D1, but you can find somewhere to go because somebody will find you. So, you know recruiting is a different game. I remember when I was younger, you know, if your head coach didn't talk about you and, you know, they didn't see the tape, it's not happening, you know? Right, right. So people fell victim to that. But these days, you kind of can control it, man. These seven-on-sevens, you can go to tournaments and be seen, you know, and you can go, you can use your Instagram to be seen. This is so many different avenues. There's no reason, you know, the different apps, you know, that you can't get yourself out there and be seen so but the point is you got to do the work and document your work and you never know who might find you most definitely and that's one reason i wanted to bring you on i I happen to pick up on everything that you've been doing uh you know i I love the the name your moment is now that's you know one of my favorite new brands that i've seen uh you know with training and 707 and i think that you know the couple of groups that you have you are getting them exposure that they don't have because it starts now with especially with those eighth graders By the time they come in to fall, they're on the clock for four years. And if they don't do it in four years, it's not going to happen. Putting together body work, you know, you know, your Instagram or that's your resume. Put it out there. And also talk about that because you're an educator, the emphasis on the student athlete as well. Oh, man, Uh, that's huge. I mean, it's uh, I had uh, the ability and some of your listeners might know what this is. It's um, uh, AVID, I uh, was able to teach that, and uh, it's a co- it's an acronym for academic. Uh, wait, hold on, hold on. Let me let me make sure I got that right. All right, all right. Indiv- oh, achievement via individual determination. So AVID, that's what that is. Uh, I right. don't know why I had a had a freeze on that, but you know, just individual uh, determination. So what that means is is that you're really you you have to realize you are a brand. And a part of being that brand is not only being an athlete, but it's also doing things outside of, you know, what it takes to be an athlete, which means to be a student athlete. So you have to be well-rounded. I always, I, I, when I taught that class, the biggest thing I taught was, um, you know, there's, there's more than one avenue to get where you want to be. And, you know, when it comes like down to your SAT scores, that stuff matters. But a lot of stuff also matters. It's like if if you want to be, uh, if you I call every college a society, okay, or a community, and I ask kids, what is what is a community? Well, a community is this is that is people working together. And I was like, well, would you want somebody that only brought football to the community and that's it, or right. do you want somebody if I'm gonna give you hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of scholarship money, or are you going to be a productive member of the society. So a lot of these colleges, man, you can, it's crazy. All you gotta do is you volunteer, you know, in high school. Um, If you like, just go read the kids or, you know, you have a job, uh, you're doing things within the community. You're a productive part of community. And, you know, that's about, that's, it goes with being a student, a student, an athlete, and somebody that brings something more to the table, you know, because, uh, everybody's looking at you, man, you know, and I don't want to bring anybody that's going to be a, 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 a detriment to my community. I want to bring somebody that's going to be a positive to my community. And that's, you know, uh, what we try to do. Like, so we do, 
Uh, t- too bad we had an ice apocalypse down here last week. Uh, two <laughs> no weeks doubt. Ago. It. Yeah, it was we're terrible. Supposed to go, <laughs> yeah, we were supposed <laughs> to go that week to the Montgomery Bank, uh, Montgomery County Food Bank, and you know, um, volunteer. So we had to reschedule that. But just doing more things than just you know playing football. Because at the end of the day, we all know football is going to be over, whether it's your twelfth game year or whatever. It's not. It's not forever. So. Just tell right. to teach them to do more than just be a football player. Well, most definitely, man. Coach, you are doing a wonderful job, and we appreciate you for hopping on the On Your Mark show here on 105.4 RPW, PeterPostRadio.com. Before we let you go, go ahead and kick some shout-outs and also uh, give us those social medias and uh, website and everything where we can find you guys if they haven't already seen you yet. Okay. First of all, I want to give a shout-out to all my parents um, and my uh, coach, my coaches, you know, that – Brian McGavick, uh, he's been there with me from day one, you know, just helping out, doing the best he can. Um, you know, uh, all the parents collectively, I'm not going to say just one parent's name because that would do, uh, or not, I'm not going to say every parent because first of all, it's too many. And uh, <laughs> second of all, <laughs> I don't want to forget somebody. Yes, like, sir. Even from my very first people, you know, uh, the, the parents are what help. Help help the business grow. You know, uh, without them, there will be no this. You know, without the kids, obviously there will be no this. So they know who they are, and um, you know, my Instagram. Uh, that's what I'm going with uh, first and foremost. We're, we're cleaning up our website, but uh, the website will be uh, your moment is now um, dot com. Uh, your moment is now dot com, and then Instagram. Um, Make sure you follow us at Why Am I in Training. That's the letters, the acronym for your moment is now. So Why Am I in Training? Uh, Coach Mike, uh, that's me, Coach Mike. Uh, just trying to build up the followers, you know, hit the like button. Uh, make sure you're following us on uh, Twitter. Uh, same thing at Why Am I in Training. Coach Mike, uh, go find us there. Uh, the website will be up and running pretty soon here. We got a lot of projects going. Um, uh, we have uh, something called Speed Saturdays that we started just last week. So that's why my website is down. We're trying to like get all that payment options and all that kind of stuff put together so that it's a one-stop shop. You know, if you want to get your kids out there, uh, we do speed Saturdays every Saturday from 11 to 1230 over at Klein Oak uh, on the um, on the turf, uh, just working on speed, agility, getting these kids ready for the combines, uh, when uh, uh, talks, to have a Amazon Prime um, uh, documentary, docu-series, where we're gonna follow um, the kids in like a, a last chance you type way, you know? So we just had our meeting today with our producer uh, and his name is um, uh, Vashon uh, Dixon. You know, he's a great up and coming filmmaker. Go check him out on Instagram. Uh, we got a lot of projects going. It's all a blessing, you know, to be on the show is a blessing. and. Uh, we're just doing all we can to uh, get our kids where we want to be. And uh, hey, if you want to join us, join us. We're ready to get that work in. No doubt. Most definitely, man. We appreciate you joining us here. We'll take a small break on the On Your Mark Show, 105.4 RPWP, and we'll be right back. <laughs> 